Hey everybody, welcome to the round five preview. Carlton, Port Adelaide at the MCG on Sunday. It's going to be a 140 game and I cannot tell you how excited I am for this. I have been waiting for this particular situation on two fronts. Number one, I've been waiting to see how we respond after a loss. Obviously, we won our first three games, disappointing loss against the Gold Coast Suns. And I'm just excited to see what this group is made of when things don't go their way and when we lose and how we respond on the back of that. You know, we've spoken about it not being the finished product. I think some of us are under some illusions as to where we thought we may have been. I think the majority of us know exactly where we are and how much more improvement we have to come. Now, this leads me into my second point as to why I'm really excited because I understand it's a new group, it's a new coaching group, it's a new board, it's a new this, it's a new that, but people come and go in this football club. The only one thing that remains the same is us, the supporters. That is what remains constant. And I have been dying to see us play Port Adelaide again after what happened last time. That was, and I hate to, no, I don't hate to bring up the past because the past was less than 10 games ago. That was an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace what they dished up for us to sit there and watch and invest into last time we played them. And I'll say it again. Absolute disgrace. It was terrible. We, we put through so much over the last couple of decades and to see them just fold like that last year was really bad. But the it is important. And it is important because I think it reminds me and it reminds us as to where we are right now. And clearly things have changed. And that was the big thing that we all asked for. At the end of 2021, it was things have to change. It was dysfunctional, it was disorganized, and it at times lacked the commitment required of anyone representing the Carlton Football Club. So that gives me confidence knowing, okay, well, things are definitely different now. And I'm happy about that. Um, we were wounded back then, I understand that as well, but 19 straight goals. I'm going to play a little bit of a clip of my review last time because I guess we can laugh about it now, but at the time, like it was just devastating. Quite simply, he could not be more ready to coach. 13, 14. Let my luck, I picked the fucking phone up, mate. 15. Get over there and have a look at that, you fucking idiot. Go on, go over and have a look, dickhead. You what a fucking yoke. 16. David, pick the phone up, mate. 17. What an idiot, man. Oh, oh, what's this? Fucking hell, what are you doing, David? 18. 19 unanswered goals. I said, we don't have the capacity. <laughs> 19 in a row. It's time to go! So... Going into this week, you know, listen, I tipped Port Adelaide last week against the D's. The way I view Port Adelaide, I've got nothing but respect and love for Port Adelaide. I say the story every year, I do these previews and whatnot. I've had the pleasure of uh, being on the inside a little bit of Port Adelaide when they were doing their their games in Shanghai. I was, I was helping out, I was a fixer, and I got to sit on the team bus and just watch them and observe them and... I got to, you know, just watch how they go about it. First class organization, good people, good values, and they are a proud football club. There's no doubt about that. And the idea of them being 0-5 just doesn't make sense. And that's why I think it's a real danger game for us. They're all danger games, but I think, you know, Port Adelaide are a proud club and they're going to come out. And if we give them a window, just like we gave the Suns, they will take it and they will beat us. And that's a reality. They can and will beat us if we do not come with the same energy and application that we've seen in the first couple of rounds of, of this season. You know, and I understand it's going to fluctuate. Nothing is really ever linear. I doubt we're going to be a team or I doubt many teams out there will just constantly get better and be better week in, week out. You almost have to be knocked down a little bit uh, to realize your shortcomings and, and address them. So that's the idea of what I what I anticipate seeing this week. It, it needs to be tough. It needs to be contested. It needs to be desperate. And we need to be first to the ball. That is something we were able to do in the first three rounds. Round four, we lost all of that. We were not first to the ball. 
We lost the clearances significantly. We lost the contested possessions pretty badly and we lost the game and we deserve to. So it's a big one. Now, the other part about this week that I'm excited about, so this time 12 months ago, we actually played Port Adelaide in round five as well. And I went to the President's Club function. It was the day before my birthday. And it's actually fallen on the exact same date, the 17th of April. My birthday's on the on the 18th. I'm going to the President's Club function again. So I'm excited. I'm going to do it all again. I'm going to buy that damn raffle ticket again and get our margin. I'm going to buy all of that. I'm going to do the experience all over again. And I want us to have a different outcome. Um, the other part that I'm super excited about on a personal note is... My, my parents, I'm going to be going to the game and sitting with my family, which I haven't done in probably 15 years. They run a cafe and they just haven't been able to get to games, but they're taking the weekend off for Easter and it's very special. I'm very excited about it. And I think it's those moments that are really the ones you've got to cherish in life where you get to, in my case, go to the footy with your family because it just hasn't happened in, in over a decade. So I'm pumped about that. Now, in terms of the changes and who's going to be available I'm filming this on Tuesday afternoon. We haven't had their injury report yet. I don't know what Patrick Cripps' status is just yet. Uh, I'm not sure on where Pido's at and, and whatnot. I would I would hope that Pido's available. And if he is, he has to play in my view. Um, I know Tom was down last week. I expect him to be a lot better for it. I think he'll take his lessons and you know he's a good character. He's a competitive character and I think he'll be better for it. So I'm still gonna back in Tom to play in the side if if Pito's there, I want him in the side. If Corey Durden's there, you know I want him in the side. Um, Liam Stocker coming off a terrific game in the VFL, which was his second game back from the syndesmosis injury. I want him in the side. Who comes out? I'm not sure. Um, I personally, I spoke about this on the show on Monday night. I think when I look at when I look at Plowman and Stocker, I'm not sure if they're playing for the same role or if it's Stocker and Newman. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I just, if I look at the situation of Plowman and Stocks, I think I want Stocks in over Plowman personally. I think they're not too dissimilar in their defensive effort. However, I think Liam Stocker is a much more advanced player when it comes to having the ball in hand and making a play and generating territory for us moving forward and making the right decision and, and just being, I think he's just a, a better player all around. So I, I would look at that. Um, there's been a bit of chat about, you know, Setterfield and O'Brien. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'd be dropping either of them just yet. Um, I think we've got to work through it a bit more. I'm not sure if the solution is to put Chera on the wing, bring Setterfield a little bit more into the play. I think he does his best work when he's in traffic and he's handballing out. I think he's just an inside midfielder. That's ultimately what I believe. Now, if Cripps doesn't, come up and for whatever reason we, we know that he had a, a hamstring complaint at the end of last week if he doesn't come up do you bring in a Paddy Dow is it time has Paddy shown enough to suggest that he comes in and he plays as an inside midfielder and, and that's the key there I don't want to see Paddy Dow in the side if he's going to be playing on a half forward flank that's that just reminds me of David Teague I definitely don't want to see Paddy Dow come in the side and play on the wing because he's been playing as an inside midfielder all of this reserve season and preseason. So I want to see him apply that trade to, to the AFL. But ultimately, there's also the other notion of whatever the coaches decide, I'm obviously going to back it in. So so there is that. Those are the things I'm, I'm looking for. It's a tough one. Do you believe that people should be dropped from last week? Will Michael Voss want to make a statement after last week's performance? Or will he go with the approach of, all right, I'm backing you all in. There's your last warning, and we'll see how we go. So I'm just not sure. I'm keen to see how it plays out, and I'm really excited to see what this group is made of after a disappointing loss last week. And I guess the beauty of the Sunday game is when you lose, you can move on pretty quickly. You know, I don't want to forget what happened because we know the shortcomings were there. They've spoken really openly about it. Jacob Wiedering spoke really well this morning about it. And, you know, it's it's the test. It's the next test, and bring it on where... You know, almost five games into this season. It's crazy. It's it's flying by. And before you know it, you've got to get yourself on another run of momentum. That's that's crucial for us. We can't get too carried away with the fact that we did win our first three. Because the moment we start saying, yeah, but we won our first three, is the moment we lose our next three. So I'm just really eager to keep us above 500 or above 50% as a win rate. Just to keep us in the hunt. I think if you win more games than what you lose... 
You just put yourself in the best position to play finals football, and that is what I want to see in season 2022. So I'm pumped. Bring it on. Bring on the power. Let's, honestly, let's get there. We got to 66,000 people when we played Hawthorne. I don't see why we can't match that this week. The power fans will be up and about. I don't know how many of them are in Melbourne, but we should be getting there in, in big numbers and just giving the players that extra 5 or 6% just with our energy. It's crucial. And I, and I mean that. It really is crucial. So we'll get there. 140. We've got to bank these wins early as well because we've also got to think about the second half of the season. The more wins we get in this first half of the season, the more prime time slots we get in that second half. So let's get there. And let's show why we deserve those prime time slots. And uh, we'll go from there. But you let me know how you're feeling about this game. Have you forgotten? Have you forgiven, I should say, what happened in round four? Or are you are you optimistic that we'll turn it around? What needs to happen to turn it around? Is it really just making selection uh, choices? Or is it something else? We'll chat about it in the comments. And go the Mighty Blues.